Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. I've decided to prepare a second video on the Tukey procedure after the ANOVA test has been conducted. And this is coming from a request on my first video. So let's take a look at another scenario where we can use the Tukey procedure to help us understand which groups are statistically different. So assume that your question is the following. A pharmaceutical company is interested in the effectiveness of a new preparation designed to relieve arthritis pain. Three variations of the compound have been prepared for the investigation, which differ according to the proportion of the active ingredients. Namely, you have one with 15%, one with 40%, and one with 50%. A sample of 20 patients is selected to participate in a study comparing the three variations of the compound. Now, of course, you need a control, so we will also have a control, and for that, it will be something that is over-the-counter. Patients are randomly assigned to one of the four treatments, and the time until the pain is relieved is recorded on each subject. So take a look at what we found. These were the time that it took for people to be relieved with the control, the amount of time it took when the concentration was 15%, and the rest is shown. In addition, I calculated the mean and standard deviation, which is typically needed for the ANOVA test and the Tukey procedure. So our question is, test if there's a difference in the mean time to relief among the four treatments. Use a 5% level of significance. So what I did was an ANOVA table where I calculated all of these numbers that you see in pink. And I also created the null hypothesis represented as H sub zero and the alternative hypothesis. And after doing the ANOVA test, I found that there is significant evidence at 0.05 significance level to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So that means that there is a difference amongst these four treatments, but we don't know exactly which one is significantly and statistically different than the other. Okay, so we have rejected this in favor of the alternative. This is why we use the two key procedure. So we can tell which ones are significantly different. Now again, with the two key procedure, if you haven't watched the first video, I explained that the first comparison of treatments uses the largest sample mean compared with the smallest sample mean. If this test is significant, that is, there is a significant difference between them, then you make another comparison of the largest with the second smallest sample mean. And if there is a significant test there, then you continue the test where the next comparison of treatments deals with the largest sample mean with the third to smallest sample mean and so on. So I hope you get the idea. You have to cycle through as many times until you finally reach an insignificant difference between the two groups. Okay, so let's take a look now at these four groups. And the largest mean is T15. And we will be comparing that with the smallest mean being T50, which is 12.8. So T15 versus T50. The null hypothesis tells us that their means are the same, and there's no difference. The alternative tells us that the means are not the same. So if we have enough evidence to reject the null in favor of the alternative, then we will do another comparison between T15 and the second smallest mean. So we need to calculate a test statistic, and that test statistic will be represented by Q sub K. And just like in the first video, we will subtract the means of the highest minus that of the lowest. So the mean of T15 is 20, 0.4 minus the mean of T50 is 12.8. At the bottom, we take the square root of the mean square within. So this is why we created this table for the ANOVA test so that we can use this information again. 3.85 divided by how many individuals there are within the treatment group and that's five. This test statistic, whatever we calculate here, will be compared to a critical value, which is obtained in a table. I'll show you how to obtain that 
in a moment. So let's use our calculator. 20.4 minus 12.8 divided by the square root of 3.85 over 5. And we end up with a value of 8.66. So this needs to be compared with a critical value, which I'll write down as Q sub C. And the critical value is based on the amount of groups, which is 4, and the degrees of freedom, which is 16. Here's a table that we use for the studentized range statistic, which is synonymous with the two-key procedure. And like I said, we have four treatments. So look up here. And the degrees of freedom is 16. So let's go all the way down to 16. And I'll be using that first value, 4.05, instead of the bon beneath it, which is 5.19. That's for a significance level of 1%. We are doing 5%. So. 4.05. If this value is greater or equal to the critical, then you have enough evidence, statistical evidence, to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. And as you can tell, 8.66 is greater than 4.05. Hence, we have enough evidence at 0.05 significance level to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. This means that T15, this treatment group, is different than this group, T50. And therefore, we continue the cycle where we now compare T15 versus the second smallest being 16.5. We have to recreate the null and alternative hypothesis. Let me do that really quickly. The QK value will change, where this time we have 20.4 minus the mean of 16.2 over the mean square within, 3.85 over 5. If you calculate this correctly, you should end up with approximately 4.8 or 4.78. The QC value does not change. And again, the QK value is greater than the QC value. So these two groups are significantly different. We reject this null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So we have to cycle through this again. This time we'll compare T15 versus the third smallest mean being T40. So let me just rewrite the null and alternative hypothesis. And now we calculate QK. We have 20.4 minus 17.2 over, and the bottom part remains the way it was. We end up with 3.64. So finally, QK is smaller than QC, which we found to be 4.05. We do not have enough evidence to reject the null in favor of the alternative. So at this point, we stop this post hoc procedure and we look to these two groups and say that these two groups are significantly different than one another. And there you have it. Another example on the Tukey procedure following the ANOVA test.